Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Recently I shared this card where I masked off one side of it and created a really bold look. And you guys loved that card. So today I'm gonna to be sharing even more ways to create kind of a bold technique like this. There's something so awesome about these cards because they're really simple to put together as well. I also wanted to let you guys know that all the supplies are linked in the video description. Using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Now let's get into the video. All right, for this first card, I'm going to use the Spread Your Wings stamp set. I love this main bird image and that there's some layering images to easily color these in in this set. So I'm using a large image of the two birds and sent it to kind of a large uh, stamp. I'm going to place this down in my Misty stamping tool to make sure that it stamps perfectly. We can pick it up with the Misty door. And then I'll stamp this down using a little bit of VersaFine Claire in the color Nocturne, which is going to give me a nice jet black impression. I'll stamp this down and give it some good pressure to make sure that it transfers. Now that looks great, but I love stamping in the Misty because if we needed to stamp it again, it would be really easy to just place it on the exact same spot. If you've seen one of my videos, you guys know that I love to clear heat emboss these black images. So this ink stays wet long enough to throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder, which is going to keep these lines nice and black and also give them a nice shine. I'll heat set this until it's clear and shiny. Here is the magic tool that I'm going to use to mask off my card. This is four inch mint masking tape. I really love mint tape because unlike other masking tapes, it's not going to rip your cardstock. So it's really nice and low tack. And I'm going to just tape it at an angle like this for a little bit of interest and then tape it down to my surface. I'll do the same thing, tear another piece. And there's a lot on this roll. So for the price of it, it really is a great value. Then I'm gonna kind of line this up like that so that it's at the same exact angle. And then I'll follow it and place it at the bottom here. Then I'm going to use my Simon Hurley Create inks and my mini domed foam blending tools and go in here to do some ink blending. Now for this first layer, I want to use a light hand and do some really soft colors. So I don't want it to be really intense right away. And if you want to, you can always tap off your blending tool to the side before coming on your cardstock to make sure that the color is going to be really nice and light. I love that about dye ink pads is you can kind of get it really dark by layering it up or you can get it really light by kind of tapping off some of the color and using a lighter hand to blend them together. My favorite part about my inks is my colors were really formulated to blend together and get a super smooth blend without using too much effort. So you can see just how nicely this orange and pink are blending to create kind of a new color in between and a really nice transition. Last but not least, I'm using a little bit of crown wheat at the top here. And again, using kind of a lighter hand to make sure we're not getting too much color on this first layer. And I love this deep, rich purple color. It's a great tone to blend with that pink. Now I love how this is and you could totally leave it there, but sometimes I like to add a little bit more dimension to my blending. So I'm going to bring in the tiny circle stencil. I love this one for adding some texture down to the surface. I'm going to place this down and then I'm going to use a piece of mint tape and this is running low so I gotta add it to my shopping list. But I'm just gonna take the regular mint tape and place this right at the top here. And this is going to create sort of a hinge so that we can look at our blending as we're going and it'll end up down in the same spot every time. Now I'm going back in with the same exact ink colors. So starting off with Shooting Star and this time we wanna be way more heavy handed. So I'm gonna go in using the same blending tools as well and I'm blending over top of the surface through this tiny circle stencil. Now, as I'm blending, I'm avoiding the area of the birds. I just want to add these dots around the birds to create a nice background. To do that, I'm just kind of going up against the edge of the birds with my blending tool and then avoiding it as I work my way around. And the reason we did that hinge technique is so that it's super easy to check in on your blending and see how it's going. And if you need to get into smaller spaces, using the edge of your blending tool is going to be your best friend to get in there and blend that color out. And that's the really awesome part about the translucent dye-based inks is as you layer these up on the surface, it's going to build and build. So you're going to keep adding more and more color and it's going to look darker, but it's the same sort of shade and tone of the color. And so I really love techniques like this where you start off with the color really light-handed and then you sort of build up the background with more dimension using the exact same tones. All right, and then once we're done, we can peel this stencil off and check out our blending around those birds. It really added lots of depth. Now check this out. This is where the real magic of mint tape comes in. It doesn't rip your cardstock and it keeps a super crisp line across. I'll do the same thing at the top. 
and you get a really nice crisp white line. I'm telling you guys, that tape is so versatile and it really does belong in every crafter's arsenal. I got an ink smudge on the surface with my finger here. It's this little pink mark and all I need to do is go in with my mono sand eraser and this is a really easy way if there's a small kind of ink mark on the surface of your cardstock to help get it off. It sort of sands away at the top surface of the cardstock removing that mark and nobody will ever know it's there. So check that out. After just a little bit of erasing, the mark is gone. Now if we wanna add a bit more contrast, I'm going to spray down a little bit of water onto my craft sheet and we're going to sort of use this as a palette. I'm going to grab a paintbrush and then I can go right over top of these birds and I'm going to just paint on a layer of water. My inks are water soluble, so this is going to react with the ink and kind of lift it off the surface. It's going to lighten this color and almost create a sort of bleaching effect. I'll do the same thing on the other side here and you can already see it's sort of starting to react and the color starts pooling. And then I find the heat tool to be really helpful in sort of speeding up the process. I like this one from Ranger because it's not going to really reheat the embossing powder. It's just going to help dry the ink on the surface there. You'll sort of notice as this starts to dry, it's really going to intensify that lighter bleaching effect of those inks and it really brings this sort of technique to life. And if you want to, you can always go back in with a paintbrush to just intensify this technique a bit more. So you can go in with another layer of that water and really make it a lot lighter. The heat tool just really speeds along the process and shows you a drastic result quickly. One thing I love to do is take the stamp set and sort of test out sentiments. There's a lot of little sentiments that's great that you can fit inside this little area, which I really like, but I think I'm gonna go with something kind of bold and graphic and sort of follow the line of this design right there. Once again, I'm bringing in the Misty to make sure we don't ruin this at its last step, and then I'll bring in the sentiment and line it up with the line of the design. And then again, I'm going in and I'll stamp that down with some black ink. And once again, for a little bit of shine, I'll throw over some clear heat embossing powder. All right, and there is the finished card. I love how this turned out with that really great diagonal mask striped and all of the texture around those beautiful birds. For my next card, I wanted kind of a playful look. So I'm going to be using the Whimsical Oval stencil, which has some really great bold openings that kind of create a nice playful design. And then they also have all of the masks included as well, so you can use those for different techniques too. I've got an extra roll of mint tape on hand because you gotta always stay stocked. And I'm going to mask this off. I just wanna mask off the edges to make sure that I don't get any ink where I don't want it. Then again, I'm gonna start off using a little bit of guppy and blend this on the surface of my card. I want to keep it pretty light-handed again for this first sort of layer and I can always darken things up a little bit later. Having this stencil is really nice because you can just lay it down and get these shapes whereas if I had to cut these out they definitely would not look as good. To add texture to this one I'm going in using the tiny diamond stencil. I love all these tiny shapes. To go inside of things like this they're just great small textures to add and again going in with a little bit of a heavier hand and I'm going to blend this on the surface. All right, and when I lift that off, check out the beautiful texture that you get with that design. And then I'll lift off the mask as well, and you get that really fun, and like I said, kind of playful, whimsical shape. Next, I wanna add this medium oval, so I like to kind of overlap these shapes, and I've taped off any of the excess around it. And then I can go in using a little bit of triple berry. Now, notoriously, orange and purple are going to make kind of a brown color. So again, I'm starting off at the edge where it's not overlapping to really add the nice darkest color. You can see just how smooth these are blending. And then I'm going to lightly bring this over top of the orange. I don't want it to be too overlapped and for there to be too much color. I just want there to be a little bit of orange over top without making it muddy. Then I'm going to bring in this tiny diamond stencil again because I want to add some more texture. And I'm going to lay it down and start applying the color down a little bit heavier handed so that you're going to see it as a second layer. And once we're done, check out that beautifully overlapped, playful design. I love how whimsical those shapes are. And like I said, I really couldn't freehand that by myself. So having stencils as kind of masking techniques is really great. Since I use that purple and orange, I wanna stick with a Halloween theme. And I love this mythical monster stamp set. It just has these adorable monsters. They're kind of a little bit quirky and have a nice personality. And I think I'm gonna use these two down here. All right, so I'm just going to stamp both of these guys using again, a little bit of VersaFine Claire ink. And then I can stamp them down onto my stark white cardstock, giving it some good pressure 
And there we have those fun little dudes. And then again, of course, I'm going to throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder so we can go in and watercolor these in. All right, now to color these guys in, I'm going to use some ink pads. I'm using some bright greens and blues to kind of coordinate with the colors we used in our background. And I'll just smoosh these down onto our craft sheet to get a little bit of ink out that we can watercolor with. Now, whenever I watercolor an image, I always like to start off with a layer of water. If you guys have seen me do this, you know that it's because we want to kind of moisten the cardstock before we apply a layer of ink. That way the ink doesn't just sink right in and isn't able to blend. This way we can blend it across the surface and get a nice smooth, even coverage. Then we can go in with a little bit of water and our first and lightest color. Here I'm using a bit of clear skies to make the sky blue. And I'm going to just bring that color in and you can see, again, it's easily able to spread across the surface since we had the layer of water down first. It makes it a lot easier to add down this first color smooth. Next, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of no diving. And with this color, it's going to add a little bit of depth and dimension with the blue. If you need to, to help blend it, go back in with a little bit of water and then go in between those two colors. I'm not too particular where I add the color with shadows. I just kind of do it where different body parts meet. And also in designs like this, where there's kind of stripes and more detailing, that's usually where the darker color should start going. The shading really brings a lot of life to these monsters and I love the depth that it adds. Then for my first color, I'm going in using a little bit of Psyche. This is a really bright lime green color that almost looks a little bit yellow. For my second color, I'm going in using a little bit of Tropical Tango to add it down to some of those sketchier areas to add a little bit of shading in. And mixing these two colors together creates kind of a cool new color in between. To cut these guys out, I'm using my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors, which are really nice because they spring back out at you like this so your hands don't get tired. And I'm just going to go around the images and fussy cut them out, leaving a little bit of a white border. Then I'll go in with some foam tape and adhere these guys down right over top of the background. And I just love how the design of the background creates a fun and playful grounding place for the monsters. I chose I'm only here for the candy because that one's hilarious and the happy Halloween sentiment. So I'll use my anti-static powder tool to make sure there's gonna be no powder where we don't want it. And then I'm going to stamp both of these sentiments down using a little bit of Versamark clear sticky ink. I'm going to stamp them down onto my black cardstock. And then I'll throw over some white heat embossing powder, tap off the excess. And if you still see excess powder, I like to lightly blow it off because if you flick, sometimes too much powder comes off. And then I'll heat set that until it's nice and bright white. And that finishes this card off really nicely. I love the playful background we created with the whimsical ovals. And those monsters are just too cute on there to finish it all off. All right, you guys, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did and leave me a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite. Remember, all the supplies are linked down below. And I'll see you guys very soon for another card making video. Bye.